The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's, uh, it's really quite usual that when we uh, read a passage from the Gospel, uh, there are a whole lot of allusions that are made that we don't quite catch. What does it mean? It means that um, Jesus, in, in preaching, in offering words to the people of his time, takes for granted the fact that many of them, maybe even most of them, uh, understand in a very detailed way the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures. And this, these, uh, I, I offer that because in these um, two little paragraphs uh, from the Gospel of, um, of Mark, uh, there, are, there are many, many Old Testament references packed in here. And uh, I'm, I will say that uh, we don't have time this morning to look at each of those references in order to help us understand what Jesus is talking about. But I think that that's, that's the kind of project that we would want to take on ourselves. And actually, it's not that hard to, um, to figure out what those references are, because in, in most Bibles, you've, you will find either little uh, uh, footnotes or um, uh, marginal comments that refer you to the passages that are implicated here. So I'm going to offer that to you for your work. I just want to, I want to pull out the kind of summation of all of those things to give us perhaps um, something that's a bit more e easy to digest uh, for us this morning in, in the few minutes that, uh, that we have together. Uh, what Jesus wants us to see is that, one, he is bringing uh, God's kingdom to bear. So uh, what Jesus wants, what God wants for his world is that God's rule is embraced and lived out everywhere. All right, so what, is, what does this mean for us? It means that um, in order to achieve the perfection for which the world was created, we all have to submit our hearts and our lives to God. We have to live under God's rule, live by God's rule and help to advance his rule in the world. This is, this is his kingdom, the building up of his kingdom. And his kingdom is a kingdom of holiness and justice, which means that his kingdom is a kingdom in which we have perfect relationship with God. We have interpersonal fulfillment with God. We, we, know, um, we know that God loves us, and we love him with our whole heart. Yet that's, that's what holiness means. We, we have a deep appreciation of God's love for us, and we love Him with our whole heart. 
and our whole mind, our whole strength, our whole self. Yeah, and justice means that receiving that, receiving that love of God, we're eager to love the people around us. And we're eager to create an, uh, an order and structures in the, in the world that are founded on love, right? God's love for us and, and our, uh, our need to bring that love to life for the people that God entrusts to our care. Yeah, so this is God's kingdom of holiness and justice. The first part of this, of this uh, very complex passage is that Jesus is, in fact, bringing God's kingdom to bear in the world. He, everything, he's, everything he's doing is advancing God's rule. Right? He's, he is fulfilling the promises that God has made to establish his kingdom of holiness and justice. That's point one. And point two is that it looks very different from what people would expect it to look like. Right, because these are, these are, you say, you start saying kingdom, you think, a oh, kingdom, that's a big thing. That is a big thing, but it has very humble beginnings. Yeah, here it has humble beginnings in the, in the life of, of Jesus, right? He, he cures some people. He has 12 people who follow him very closely. Uh, this is not like in his own lifetime, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't amass an army. He doesn't have riches and power to put on, to put on display in the world. His, his movement is very small, and yet his movement changes the world, right? Because, because now there are billions of Christians in the world. It all started with Jesus and his little movement. But that means for us also that the kingdom of God and our, and our role in advancing God's rule also is likely to be somewhat small. But smallness is not a bad thing. And I don't say that just as, as a short guy, you know? I was always a short kid. I don't say it just because I was a short kid, right? It's, it's because God in, in the small things allows us to grow in faithfulness to him. And it's only faithfulness to him that advances his kingdom. So here, here and now, right, this is our little humble expression of praise. This is our humble offering of our hearts and our lives to God. We're dedicating ourselves to him this morning. And then he's going to have a whole bunch of small and humble tasks for us to do today. They'll all be motivated by and animated and sustained by love. So here we commit ourselves to the God who is love. And then as he sends us forth, we know we've got it in our minds. Today, it's mine to build up the kingdom of God, yes, but in the humble way that he has me. And how do I do it? I do it by giving myself in the cause of love, in everything I think and say and do. Right? Everything for me has to be charity. And I can't do it of my own, of my own strength. That's why this dedication is so important. God is giving me the strength. He's pouring his life into me so that I can do what he's calling me to do in the building up of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven.